She was exhausted of winter. It had been merely one month since the snow had first fallen, and the ground began truly freezing around her. But the end of the first month had come, and Freya stirred. The spirit of winter had led her to this tree as he had led her many years prior. This was her winter tree. It was her home, in a manner. She had always thought of it as such, too, for as long as he, for as long as he had showed her the, the comforting embrace of the tree's roots and the warm pulse of the earth's surrounding. Spirit of Winter had first met Freya as a child, burning in a bald heap near the inland lake. Spirit of Winter had approached her carefully, dared touch her inflamed shoulder, where the flames died at the place of his touch and only her stony skin remained. She had started then. She had flown backward, afraid, and fully engulfed once again. But also curious. She wanted to know the spirit. Without voice or gestures, Spirit Winter brought her cape, her a cape of snow and a crown of branches encased with ice. And Freya's flames subsided. Her flesh hardened, first smooth as the first skim of ice on water then harder, like a long-existing glacier. Her breath had turned from smoke to fog. She tried to step, but could not. And in the instance when her feet failed to dance, Freya's eyes broke open with fire again, and her cape disintegrated, and her crown exploded, sending shards like arrows in every direction. Her scarf of fire returned, but Spirit Winter looked with sadness upon her. Pointing at the sun, Spirit Winter reminded Freya that the sun was leaving the lands. He could not change the course. He needed to keep watch of the sun lest it leave the lands forever. But he had a place for her, if she wanted. And Freya did not, did want very much to be away from all this snow and cold. And so Spirit Winter showed her the tree, her tree, which at the time was a mere sapling just like she. It was now again that that time when Spirit Winter walked the lands and watched the skies for the sun. Freya did not wish to remain underground for so long this winter. So many months, so many birds unseen, so many songs unheard. Perhaps she could try this winter above. As she stretched, her hand broke through the hardened ground. Spirit Winter felt a shiver run through his spine. For how could he bear to gaze upon Freya, now that she had grown to her fruitful years? She would melt him right away, with the full force that was now in her nature. And then who would keep watch on the sun? And this is the prompt from March 16th. I know it's been almost a month since I wrote that, but I thought I would share this one. This one was, it was kind of like all of them, really. Um, it was kind of difficult for me to figure out where I wanted to go with it. <laughs> but um, what I found interesting about how this story um, turned is that by the time I was done writing it, I was more interested in Spirit Winter than I was interested in Freya. Because I liked the idea of Spirit Winter being kind of a watcher or a guardian of the sun, rather than being this cold... Um, intrusive force of winter that's like intentionally coming because um, because of the changing seasons or whatever um, I liked the idea of the sun being the one moving away from the lands and then spirit winter who would otherwise have no business being there at the, in these lands was drawn by nature of his will and sense of duty to make sure that the sun didn't leave the lands for good. So I, I just kind of liked that idea that, um, that came from this little story prompt. 
And I'd like to maybe play around with that idea more in a short story or incorporate it in a longer piece. But what are your guys' thoughts about, um, first, how I took this story, um, and second, um, how would you have created the story based on this image? Um, and I guess just to kind of change change subject subject a little bit, um, and to kind of focus on personal writing pieces. Um, I guess right now my current struggles are getting out of my own way, and. What I mean by that isn't necessarily writer's block, although it could probably be considered that it could be clumped into that. Um, but getting out of my own way entails not overthinking myself into reasons why I can't continue my story or why I can't continue a chapter in, in particular. Um, currently, the, the chapter that I'm working on is focused on a character that is very complainy and kind of grumpy and critical and <laughs> he's not my favorite to write just because I just feel very meh when I write it. Um, not that any of the characters are really, you know, they're human, I mean, but I think as writers we we do understand that like you kind of have to become that character in a way in a manner of speaking um, to really become their voice and have the chapter come alive for them for you know for a character driven story which whichever bound is a character uh, character driven story so it's just been hard for me to kind of get into his skin but I'm about halfway through his chapter now, and I'm planning on finishing it today. It's pretty drizzly and coldish outside, so it's a good day to do that, but, you know, I have other things to do around the house, too, too like laundry and, <laughs> like I said, I can, you know, we can come up with all sorts of reasons why we, why we definitely should not be writing today, <laughs> but, um, but my current successes in the writing realm and with Everbound specifically is that I've been writing more lately than usual. Um, I found a spot in the house where I just feel creative and it's, it's just funny how sometimes I need a new place to write even if it's just a different corner of the house. So whatever works I guess. Um, <laughs> And also I've found I've been I do have this tendency to write more and feel like I'm being more productive with my writing um, in the morning so the, it, it's been helping that sunrise is a lot sooner than what it has been the last few months so and it's only gonna get um, sooner and sooner so hopefully with my waking up earlier and the sun shining earlier um, I'll be able to get some some good writing done before I head off to work and kill my brain cells because by the time I get home again I'm pretty much brain dead at that point. <laughs> I guess that's another question I or not really a question just more of amusing that as a full-time as someone who works full-time being a writer as well is a challenge and I always think about Stephen King and how it he's a, a brilliant writer um, he really is I mean he's not my favorite but his philosophy on writing is just bare bones you sit down and you write and there's something very simplistically charming and hopeful about that mindset or maybe not hopeful but um, pragmatic I guess simplistic simplistic 
simplistically pragmatic. <laughs> it seems like it's the right and easy thing to do as a writer. And that but then like on the flip side it makes a person feel like they're not a writer if they're not following Stephen King's um, code of writing. <laughs> so I know I've fallen into that trap of feeling less of a writer because I'm not always able to sit in my chair and and get a whole lot of writing done. Sometimes I can only get a paragraph done or maybe a couple sentences. But we are writers. If you write, you're a writer. And I hope that's what this podcast is reminding us. And I hope it's encouraging people um, to remember that. Because I, I do know what it's like to feel inferior. Um, you know, I work full time. So by the time I get home, I... I am brain dead, for one thing, which writing requires the mind. I mean, it's like, it's equivalent to, in a way, running a marathon and then coming home and, oh, your other hobby happens to be, I don't know, like, I don't know, your other hobby require, it involves jogging or gardening or whatever. It's like, no, after running a marathon, you don't have any more physical energy. <laughs> you just don't. Well, maybe you do, but I mean, most people after doing a whole bunch of exercise, um, they need a break after that. They, they're not probably going to be doing a whole lot of, a lot more exercise. You can only do so much. And with being full-time and having other hobbies, um, I'll, you know, I'm not just a writer, but I have a dog, so, and I love bike drawing, and she needs her exercise, too. So, I mean, that's a good, you know, hour or so, or longer, you know, depending if the weather's good and um, we're having a lot of fun and whatever. So, you know... And then there's dinner, if, I mean, if you really count. You know, most of the time it's just, could it be fast food or something quick? And, I mean, that's fine. I don't, I don't require homemade meals, but if I did, that would be a whole other hour or two. So you kind of get the point that, like, there's not a whole lot of time in a day <laughs> when it comes down to it. So... I mean, even if, and even if you're not a full-time, you don't work full-time, and you still have tr trouble getting um, words down on, on paper, it doesn't mean that you're a failure or less of a writer. Um, it just means that you're a 3D person. You have more going on than just um, a computer-like mind where you just, you know what you need to do when you do it, and... There's nothing more to it. It would be nice if we were like that, but most most of us aren't. Um, one thing that I have to shout out is that uh, my friend has finished her first draft of her novel that she's been working on, which is huge. Um, <laughs> I'm so, so proud of her. And it's just... Yeah, she's been working so hard on it, and I mean, it's, it is, like, I've read the first chapter, well, I've read some parts more than that, too, but I know she's changed a lot, but for, I've been reading along with, um, with the progress, and reading the first chapter, it's like, heck yeah, that is definitely publishable stuff right there, <laughs> so I am just, I'm really thankful to be part of the reviewing and reading process, and it's just really great. I'm really proud of her. And I I know I'm rambling a lot in this episode, I guess, but, um, you know, I'm avoiding writing. <laughs> uh, it, it's kind of true, but I do have to say that I, have, I found that the writing group that I was a part of, while it's 
it's there's there's something really useful about being a part of the a writing group and this particular writing group. Um, I was finding also that it was causing me more stress and or distress than than um, usefulness, I guess. And not that sharing my work and reading others' work is not useful. Um, it, it's not even about sharing work and having work reviewed and, and talked about, but I think it was like, I think it's the manner in which the discussions are happening and the location um, and the format of the writing group. Um, that is one thing I would, I'd be very interested to hear your guys' opinions on, and I know it'll vary, there's no right answer, but what kind of writing group format and and or locations seem to work the best for you. Meaning, which ones do you get the most out of and which ones do you, where would you feel the most um, productive and have the most fun as well? Um, I guess that's part of the reason is like, I need to have, I need to be in a relaxed setting and have fun with it. Whereas I was feeling it was just like a little too a little too narrow path so like there we would read we had read all of the pieces for that meeting and then we'd come together and discuss um in rapid fire type setting our thoughts on the piece for 20 minutes and um, anyone could just popcorn their opinions into the conversation and the writer would sit and listen. And I'm sure that format works for some people. And um, I also have to include that there, you know, it's it's in a non, it's in a quieter location, which is good. Um, but I guess what I'm getting at is I, I feel most productive and have the most fun when there's like, you know, you can have a drink, there's other chatter around so that the the members of the writing group aren't taking themselves too seriously either. Like, we remember that, oh, okay, this is something that we're doing for fun, and some of these opinions of ours are just opinions, not not law or anything like that. So, oh, yeah, like, okay, yeah, let's have fun, you know, type of thing. So... I guess for me, my, my ideal setting would be not a rowdy bar, but like just like a tavern pub-like setting and have the writer be allowed to, to interject or answer questions from the readers at will rather than feel like they're duct taped to a chair with a spotlight on their face. Um, yeah, and I just, I like having, I like being around that type of setting where it feels like ideas can flow freely and it doesn't, there isn't like one or two alpha personalities that tend to take over the rest of the group and influence how everyone else ought to feel about a certain piece and where the, the a certain piece ought to go and such. I just feel like it needs to be a group where ideas can flow f freely and um, you can just have fun with toying with ideas and so I decided that I wasn't that I'm, I'm good with not being a part of this particular writing group and I'm just not quite at the point in my life where I feel comfortable or responsible enough to create my own writing group because as anyone who knows me knows I'm extremely inconsistent I burn out quickly etc etc so I'm I'm just not quite a a leader of a group type although I, I haven't tried being a writing group leader yet um, but 
I know myself enough to know that I have a certain pattern about me. So I guess just to kind of wrap this up, because I've been rambling for way too long now, I, I'm trying to change the name of this YouTube channel to The Scriptory, but I changed the name too many times up to the point that it's currently named, so I have to wait three months before it'll, it will allow me to change the name again, and I'm not sure which day of those three months I'm at right now, but I keep trying periodically and it's still not letting me. So it'll remain Northpaw Rights for a time, for the time being. But eventually I will get it changed to the, to the scriptory and it'll remain that. Um, I just find that so pretentious when sites do that type of thing. It just feels very big brothery and not what the internet should be or what the internet began as. <laughs> But that's a whole other discussion. Um, so um, if you guys have any any thoughts about anything that I rambled on about in this in this episode, please leave a comment. Um, if you're liking these episodes, please um, like, subscribe, hit the bell button so you're notified when I actually post something, um, and share the share the Twitter account and my Tumblr and this um, this YouTube channel to people who might be interested. Um, just trying to foster a community of writers encouraging writers. So I really appreciate you listening and being a part of this. If you have any writing prompts you'd like used, please let me know. Um, and if you'd like me to read aloud any piece that you've written, please let me know. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Keep on writing, and remember you are a valid writer. <laughs>